This is seat time and you're f***ing out and I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Seat Time, everybody. This is Brian Pierce. We're talking to Caleb Russell. You guys would know him for being the GNCC badass. He's a two-time XC2 uh, champion, and as well, he's working on what's probably going to be an XC1 championship right now, I think, I would say. Caleb Russell, how was your evening, sir? Oh, not too bad. Just um, did a little bit of trail work, mountain bike trail work, and uh, haven't done much at all today. No, not really? You just, you know, being a winner at home? Yeah, just hanging out, having fun, uh, relaxing. That's awesome, dude. So, uh, you just said that you're about three hours from home, so how was that to be able to come home from your win this past weekend and just sleep in your own bed? Was it pretty amazing? Yeah, it's been pretty good. I've been able to do that the last um, three races, so, and North Carolina was even closer, so. Yeah, it's it's nice to be able to uh, get home, you know, at a decent time, and uh, uh, you, you don't feel like uh, the next day is worthless, you know, uh, traveling and everything. Yeah. Okay, so Stuart Baylor Jr., when we talked with him last week, said that he was going to beat you this past weekend. He did not. So is there anything that you have to say to him about that? Um, no, nah, I'm all right. No, you're all right? Good. We'll let the racing do the talking, then. I like that kind of stuff. Okay, so you've been on a 350 for, did, were you on a 350 last year as well when you started in the XC1? Yeah, I uh, I was thinking about switching to the 450 this year. Um, I was, I was, I don't know, I was uh, down in Florida all winter riding with Mike Brown and, you know, he was uh, kicking my butt and I was getting pretty frustrated and upset and uh, and we we're in the sand as well and my bike was well under, well under horsepower. But um, I got one, and I loved it, and uh, I felt really good on it. And I, I still have it. I still use it to practice and everything. But um, we ended up doing some testing back in the hard pack stuff, and um, back to back on the 350, it was way better, and I felt more confident in my riding. So uh, that's what I'm sticking with. Nice. That's actually going to be one of my questions is, you know, why it seems that you being on a 350, you were able to be, you know, to do a little bit better. But, I mean, you kind of said it right there. When you feel a little bit more confident, um, that makes you ride a little bit better. That may be one of the things, side note, what's going on with James Stewart. All the talk that like, maybe, like, he is not going to be with JGR, the Yamaha, Suzuki, Outdoors. You heard anything about that? No. Yeah, no. apparently uh, JGR, they, and this is also speculation that he might have uh, – they might have let him go from his contract and that he may be a privateer on a Suzuki for the outdoors. So that could be interesting. That says a lot about confidence, though, if it's if any of that's absolutely true. Yeah, that's big news to me. Uh, that's pretty It's pretty wild. I couldn't see that really happening, you know. But, um, uh, yeah, he's got some things going on he needs to work on. I agree. I definitely think that he's got a couple things to work on. Okay, so I saw a bunch of pictures from you this past weekend, but unfortunately none of them were very close up. But it did look like you had shaved and gotten rid of all that little funky facial hair that you've been rocking for ever so long. I would say too long. Well, did you finally get rid of it, or you just can't see it in the pictures still? It, it's growing back a little bit. Is it? <laughs> see it coming in? Barely. Barely, yeah. yeah. If, you, if you go ahead and get a Sharpie and just and trace <laughs> it out for me, I'm pretty sure we can figure it out. Yeah, I'm going to start my uh, November stash next week. You're, oh, are you? <laughs> nice i have actually yeah because you're gonna need a little bit of time to grow it i'm gonna start my mustache may mustache this week so i think i'm gonna be doing a lot better than you are yeah probably okay. i'm older it's okay you're 22 yeah 22 22 i see i'm 32 i got 10 years on you man it's cool <laughs> i look like that when i was 14 but whatever um <laughs> so uh, you have kind of been following in a little bit of the footsteps of Charlie Mullins where, you know, he grew up riding in uh, the GNCC cir circuit from a very young age up through and become the champion. And now you're riding at a very, very consistent level. It's only your second year, uh, but you've come up through the ranks in the GNCC series. What would it mean to you? Has this some would that championship be something you've dreamt up since you were eight years old? Or, I mean, is this kind of like, I don't know what's going on? Um... You know, I, I, I'm not, I'm not a person to get real excited over things. And, uh, you know, I, I don't really know how to put it. I'm not, I'm not a very, uh, emotional person when it comes to uh, like 
winning races and you know i don't get too excited you know it's just a, it's just a race and uh i still got life to look forward to you know um right. even though it is uh what i love to do and everything but yeah it's it's something i've always looked forward to uh trying to accomplish is getting to where uh uh, all my heroes that I looked up to in the past, uh, Rodney Smith, Fred Andrews, and Steve Hatch, and Shane Watts, and all those guys, um, you know, just becoming one of those riders that uh, everybody looks up to and uh, wants to be when, when they're a kid. Right. Well, I mean, you've, you've definitely started out that well, you know, with your XC2, uh, your two XC2 championships. Um, what was it last year? I mean, obviously, it was your only, you're only in your second year in the XC1 class, so you're doing phenomenal. But what was it last year that you learned the most that you brought into this year that really has kind of changed the, you know, the way that you're finishing races? Um, I'm not really I, – I can't really, like, pinpoint one thing besides um, I learned how to win and uh, be consistent and be on the podium and uh, – and to, and to see, you know, it, it it's you're gonna have to be on the podium week in and week out to uh, to be in title contention and uh, really minimize your bad races. Even though I've already had one, I've I've done a pretty good job of re recovering from that. I would I would totally agree. Uh, was uh, what was it that had happened to you at Florida that uh, I think you were in twelfth was where you wound up finishing? Did you even actually finish all the laps? No, I I uh, I didn't do the last two laps. Um, I think it was the third lap. I had a big crash, and um, I'm, I might have done one more lap after that. And uh, my shoulder was it, was it was bothering me after that crash, and it just kept getting worse. And the whoops kind of uh, played a big factor in it, it making it more sore and stuff. And I ended up pulling off because I it, it felt like something was uh, pretty bad wrong with it, but um, it wasn't too it wasn't too bad. It was just a minor AC separation. And uh, it's not like the, the collarbone didn't separate or anything or the shoulder didn't come completely out of, out of, out of socket. So uh, it wasn't anything major. And um, I just took it easy the next week and, and uh, had a lot of help from Doc Maresca. And uh, he got me ready for Georgia. Nice. And then since then, you've been, you know, going three in a row. I mean, what's your thoughts on that? I mean, are you just going to try to keep going with it like Baylor's been doing? Yeah, I mean, I'm just going to do the do the same thing. I've been doing since the season started, you know, uh, stay level headed and keep humble and nice. um, just put in the work during the week and uh, everything will happen. And, and uh, I just uh, pretty, ha pretty happy with the way everything's turned out. I've, I've put in a lot of hard work this year and I can remember last year um, at South Carolina, I, I got my first XC1 podium starting from the front row. Um, I, I was right there with Charlie and, um, Strang was actually catching us and he caught me and passed me and those guys got me by like two minutes. And, uh, I remember after that race, I was beat, I was exhausted. It was pretty hot. Like it was hot and not too, not as dusty as this weekend, but, um, it took a, it took a lot of, a lot out of me mentally and physically. Um, but I, I remember thinking to myself after the race, you know, I got beat because I was, I wasn't in shape. <laughs> Right. And I, I told myself right there, I was like, I'm not going to let that happen anymore. So um, I, I put in a lot of hard work to uh, get to where I am. Yeah, and it's, it's it's been paying off. Like you said, you've learned the win. And I think that yeah, that's a resounding uh, theme that we I keep hearing. The more and more I get to talk to people, especially the people that have been putting in very dominating performances, is that they learn to win. Is that once you get that feeling, they just you go out and you completely repeat that over and over again to come away with another one. And I think that that's... That's kind of interesting. I'm I'm not that person, unfortunately. I'm always the guy in third or fourth in like the bogus A class. So yeah. you know, maybe one day, right? What do you think? No, probably not. Maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe, yeah. We'll, we'll we'll always wonder. So okay, yeah. I read somewhere that you like to play golf as well. You're a mountain biker too, and all that stuff. But so, what's the big thing about golf for you? Why do you like golf? I retired. You retired? <laughs> did, did Baylor beat you at that already? No, you can't beat me at golf. <laughs> I will say there's not much you can beat me at. Oh, like, at age, that's uh, about it, really. Well, no, you even got him beat there. He's like 17, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, uh, I, I, I was playing a lot of golf uh, before I started, uh, you know, uh, 
doing more during the day than just goofing off. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I don't, I don't play much golf anymore. Well, cool, man. Well, hey, so we got a, we got the next race coming up in the end of the month, you know, and then we're going to be going for a couple more races. I mean, you've said it, but just to make sure, I mean, just stay consistent, keep doing the same thing and keep trying to come away with a win. Is that kind of where you're at or? Yeah, pretty much. Um, just, uh, keep myself in the same routine, not try to change anything up or anything on the bike for that matter either. You know, my bike's working really well and I feel pretty comfortable on it. And, uh, I mean, there's not much more for me to say. Everything's clicking just right. Perfect, man. Well, we hope it keeps clicking for you. We appreciate you taking a little bit of time to talk with us here at Seat Time. Uh, Seat Time is a, on the URL of seattime.co. It's where you can find us. And then as well, we're on Facebook, facebook.com slash Seat Time. And as well, we're on Twitter, Seat Time underscore CEO. Those are all the nice little social media outlets where you can find us. Uh, Caleb, do you have anything that you'd like to mention out to any followers or viewers? Um... No, not really. I'm not a very good. I'm not very good at PR myself. I'm, that's that's one place I'm pretty poor at. Well, I'll do it for you. Caleb Russell, folks, is on Twitter. <laughs> Kr five five seven. That's his national number. The five five seven part. Kr his initials. Caleb Russell. Can't really get much better than that. So go ahead, give him a follow and uh, give him a like, high five on the internet to make sure you say thank you for doing this interview with us. Stay on the line, dude. We're gonna talk with you just a little bit afterwards. Always enjoy. Pie full of awesome, everybody. We'll see you on the internet. Peace. <laughs> I'm Caleb Russell and if you don't rock a stash you're gay <laughs> <laughs>